Welcome and thanks for checking out this video of my uh, lounge chairs I made out of pallet wood. Um, here I'm just cutting up the wood for the main uh, frame, uh, just two by fours. It's about six foot too long and about 20 inches wide. Um, I just used the dimensions of some existing lounge chairs I have that are plastic and they're just uh, getting ready to be thrown out because they're uh, just old and not smooth anymore so they're just a pain but um, so just using the same dimensions of that I wish I would have made them a little bigger now that I've made them but um, they should be okay it's just plain old pine um, I didn't make them out of pressure treated wood the only pressure treated wood I have is the uh, the legs and the, the wheels I made out of pressure treated wood because of uh, that's going to be sitting right on the uh, the ground or on the carpet around the deck put a couple coats of uh, bear stain on it at the end so I'm hoping it holds up pretty well they won't be sitting out in the winter time, so it'll just be the summer. I already got the two main rails cut. Now I'm cutting the uh, front and back um, pieces that go between the main rails. This is uh, going to be the piece of wood that the slats are going to uh, be screwed to. also has some notches cut out in it for the, uh, the backrest uh, for three different angles. So it'll lay flat and then it'll be three different angles for uh, sitting. This is that same piece of wood, but I'm uh, just cutting it and basically uh, not in half, but cutting it down to fit before I take it to the planer. Didn't really spend much money on these chairs except for buying the uh, the hardware for the uh, lounge part of it, the the backrest. I had to buy the bolts and stuff, and the bed to buy the paint or stain. Um, but other than that, I pretty much had everything already. These are the uh, pressure treated legs, two different lengths of uh, the the. Um, legs with the wheels on them are a few inches shorter uh, because of the wheel height but you'll see that later on in the video Now we're uh, getting ready to cut the slats. Um, just um, the slats of the pallets is all I, I used here. I'm um, just cutting them to length. Two different lengths. There's one uh, one set that goes on that'll be for your back to, to lay on. Uh, then the other ones will be for where your uh, legs are going to go. So the ones on your back, you know, has to be able to move up and down for the. Uh, different angles
All right, next step was uh, running them through the planer uh, just to flatten them down and save a lot of sanding. So just thinning them up a little bit to get the uh, splinters and stuff off of them as best I could. Wasn't really going for any specific thickness here. Um, I didn't want to take too much off, obviously, because I didn't want them to be flimsy, but um, I just ran them through a few times to uh, clean them up. I was more concerned with the uh, top uh, where you'll be laying on rather than the bottom that'll be uh, underneath the chair. So. Alright, these are the uh, the frame, the uh, left and right side of the frame. Just cleaning all the edges up on this. Made two of these lounge chairs. This is pretty much, this is just the wood for uh, one of the chairs. bad thing about the pallet wood are the hidden nails that you uh, miss um, I had a nail and not this these sections of wood but in my other chair I made I had a nail in there and I ran it through my planer and binged up my blade And again, I'm not going for any specific dimensions here, just uh, cleaning up the edges and uh, squaring everything up. These are the uh, front and back pieces. <clears throat> now we're just running them through the uh, router table. Just the uh, these are just the slats right now. I use like a quarter inch round over bit for that. These first pieces are the ones that will be on the back rest. Uh, so these are going to have routed edges on uh, the top four sides. Next I'll be uh, turning them sideways and then putting a round over edge on the uh, two edges. Takes care of the pieces for the back support. 
Now these are just all the slats for your uh, for the legs, the, the part that doesn't move on the chair. Got stuck there with a piece of a, a knot on the edge of the board. Stopped it from going through the uh, fence there. <clears throat> Alright, these are the uh, two longer edges of the, the main frame. Just using the same bit going over the edges on those. I didn't worry about routing the uh, inside where the uh, slats are going to be sitting. I just wanted those to be squared up. So I just flipped these two boards over and do on the other side now. Next I'll be taking these two boards apart and just uh, finishing the last edges on the uh, I don't know, the, the short edge of the board. Yeah, those will be the outside corners of the uh, main frame. Alright, now we're uh, going to start putting this main frame together. Just used uh, glue and I think it were four inch wood screws I found. I wanted something really long and beefy so it kind of worked out good finding those screws. drilling the edges here. I just made a little cheap little guide to uh, make so the holes were in the same location on all corners. At this point I only glued this one side up. The other side is not going to have a full 2x4. It, it, I actually ended up cutting that in half um, so I'd have a place to stick my hand underneath the part of the chair that tilts up and down. So that's just uh, being held on with uh, clamps right now. I don't think I took a video of uh, doing that other side. Okay, these are the uh, the two pieces that go on the inside of the frame for the slats to sit on. Uh, just measured like every eight inches or something to uh, pre-drill some holes for some wood screws to go into the side of the frame. Pretty much pre-drilled everything because I didn't want nothing to split. I didn't want to take any chances, so I just pre-drilled it. I don't have the notches cut in here yet because I, I don't know where they're going to be specifically so I'm just putting in a few slats uh, just to raise up these two rails uh, to get the top level as much as possible. I did a little bit of sanding at the end to make things smooth because like I, when I was running through the planer not everything ended up being exactly the same. So. Okay, everything's pretty much in and now we'll just run some wood screws into the edge and get all these done.
Alright, <clears throat> get these clamps off and go to the next segment here, which is, uh, I just use my angle grinder to grind off these carriage bolts. Uh, I didn't want them just, I didn't want to just bang them into the wood, so I ground off the squared edges underneath the, the head of the bolt. And I'm just showing three different ways. Uh, this was a, using a cutoff disc, which isn't the best way of doing it, because it's not made for that purpose of grinding. This is the actual grinding wheel that I used, which was uh, worked out good. Just didn't do a nice job as the uh, bench grinder, which is next. But all in all, it, it did what it should have done. But just throwing, showing three different ways of how I uh, ground them down. Probably an easier way of doing this, but um, this is just about the first time I've uh, used that angle grinder. I don't I don't do a lot of stuff with metal, so I was just uh, probably be comments on how I'm doing something wrong here, but it worked out in the end. And then this is the, obviously the bench grinder. This made it real easy work here. This is just one of the bolts, which is basically uh, done already. And then here's the second bolt. And it gives me a nice smooth edge. So this is a good way of doing it. I don't have my bench grinder in my uh, workshop outside, but it's just in the house. Alright, this is just showing the uh, two different results. Obviously the bench grinder looks nice. So once uh, these were done, I basically uh, just had some galvanized paint, um, galvanized spray paint put on there just to help protect from the rust. I think I got more on my fingers than I got on the bolts. Alright, now I am cutting the wood for the part of the chair that angles uh, up and down. Um, again, no set dimension here. I think everything turned out being a little under an inch and a quarter thick. Um, just cutting enough wood here probably for both the chairs so it's a little more than I uh, than for just one chair but um, I didn't really know what I was going to do yet so I just cut some wood for the dimensions I wanted this is what it turned out after I uh, rounded over the edges and uh drilled my hole in for the uh, carriage bolt. You can also see the part of the frame on the right side uh, where I, I said I didn't have the 2x4 connected. Um, so I cut that 2x4 in half and just to leave enough room for the back slats to uh, rest on. So just getting these put in place to where I can drill that hole for the carriage bolt to go all the way through the frame. I ended up, these ended up being shorter because uh, it wouldn't work with leaving them this way. So <clears throat> I did, I did like, again, I didn't really know any dimensions here. I just put things together and then found out which worked best and then cut it to fit. So on the left is the, the back slat support, is what I'm calling it. And then on the right is the back slat support leg, which is what is going to go up and down to fit in the notches. 
um, and that's the hardware I used. That was my finished uh, dimensions there. And here I'm just uh, putting it all together. Separated those two with about three washers, three flat washers, to give the uh, enough space in between the wood uh, for the second carriage bolt that goes right there. So now you can see why that had to be uh, cut shorter because of the way the uh, angle works on the back. You'll see that next. Just threw a couple pieces of wood on here with some clamps just to uh, see how everything was going to go up and down. I was pretty happy with it overall. And this also allowed me to make the marks on my uh, the slat rails um, that I'll be cutting out. There's three sections right there. So I just kind of lined up the chair where I wanted it, the, the backrest, and then just made some marks on the wood and took them off and then uh, used my bandsaw to cut out the notches. Again, I didn't have any, I just put the chair, the back of the chair in three different positions that I kind of wanted and kind of went with it and hoped it all worked out in the end. Um, it, it, it turned out pretty good. And then this is uh, with the notches cut out. And I just did some fine tuning with some files and sandpaper to kind of make them look a little better. So now I'm going to start putting some slats on. This is the uh, all the way where your head goes up. Um, I'm just making a support piece to go in between that whatever you call that piece, I don't know, it's whatever that uh, adjusting thing does, but it just helped uh, strengthen it up from going, uh, wiggling left and right with the carriage bolts at the top, because the carriage bolts aren't tight, they're, they're just snugged up enough to allow it to uh, move on its own. This is the bottom of that part that goes up and down, just the bottom section, I just put the top and the bottom on and then I put my wood in between and just uh, evenly spaced them apart to where it looked the best. The pallet wood wasn't all the same width. Um, I, I didn't trim it down to make it the same width, I just left it what it was. I did use a bigger section up here where your head's going to go just so it would help uh, to where you wouldn't have your head sitting in an open sp space on the wood. That was the reason I had to cut those slats shorter because that smaller piece in the back has to go up and down so that allowed that. Now I'm just screwing in the rest of the slats on the uh, part that goes up and down.
again I made another little template with a couple holes in it just to uh, just so all the holes were put in the same spot on all the slats it was just a piece of metal that I cut drilled a couple holes in it <clears throat> to use it on every board wish I could work this fast I'd get a lot more done alright now you see how it goes up looks pretty good now we'll just work on the rest of the slats uh, where your legs will be and then that will wrap up this part These are obviously just some spacer blocks that, that I had. I don't. They might be three quarter inch, but uh, <clears throat> just worked out to be the right uh, the right spacing that I needed. pre-drilled everything again because uh, again I didn't want it all I don't want to take a chance of having splits on the ends I did have a couple uh, once the the head met met up with the wood it, sometimes it did uh, split a little bit but again they're just pallet wood lounge chairs I don't expect them to last for uh, 20 years the only thing I wish I would have did was make them a little wider maybe about four inches wider might be my next uh, something I'd do one day is take all the slats off cut the edges two by four front and back out of there and just widen it up if I ever uh, want it if I really needed to I don't th I think it'll be fine like I say it's as wide as a typical lounge chair you'd buy at the store so um, that just that does it for that Alright, now I'm just uh, cutting in a big rabbit on this legs for them to uh, sit against the frame. This is the pressure treated wood, the only wood that I used that was pressure treated. Could have used a dado blade for this, but um, I just used my rest saw, saw blade and took care of it. No dimensions on this. Uh, I think I took about half the thickness of that 2x4 out, so it's about 3 quarter inches deep. But I thought it looked nicer sitting against the edge of the chair rather than sticking out all the way so it kind of just plus it has gives the uh, chair a place to sit on top of that rabbit so it's better uh, support
Alright, so here's that same the pieces where I cut them out. And I uh, just drill in a couple holes for the uh, carriage bolts to go into the sides. Alright, now I'm making the wheels for the, uh, the two wheels. Actually, I'm making four here. Two for this chair and two for the other chair, but <clears throat> these are just the top of some uh, pressure treated fence um, slats uh, with the dog eared tops that uh, I used them for something else. I had these pieces left over and I was thinking I could just use these for the wheels. So I just glued up, glued two together. Turned out to be about an inch thick and uh, just used them for the wood. So I just glued them together and then I put the uh, crossed up the grain so the grain wasn't going the same way so just did like a 90 degree angle on the one grain and put them together thought it would make them a little stronger I guess I was thinking about buying some wheels, like some lawnmower wheels or something, but I didn't like the look of the black rubber wheels, so I just wanted to have something I could stain that looked the same so it would all match better. So I just glue all these together, clamp them up, let them sit overnight, and then uh, do the next step in a second here. Alright, next day, taking these apart, and then we're going to scribe a uh, circle onto them using the compass. Just found the center, roughly the center. Put the compass as wide as I could make it on these boards and uh, went with it. Used a bandsaw to cut off the edges, and then we'll move over to the... Uh, sander to uh, clean them up. Alright, from here we're going to go over back to the router table. Just got another round over bit in there and uh, just putting a round edge on these wheels. Drill a center hole winner to them for the carriage bolt to go through. And do the same thing on the, uh, the legs themselves. then we'll be ready to mount them on. So I'm just using uh, quarter 20 carriage bolts galvanized on here. 
these were too long I ended up changing them all out so they weren't so long but that's all I had on hand at the time These are the uh, shorter legs that are going to get the wheel put on them. That carriage bolt gets I cut it back after uh, after I was done to make it a little shorter um, actually I, th I can't remember if I did or not now I, m I might have left it that length and then to keep them from uh, tightening up or loosening as the wheels turn I put a little bit of uh, Loctite on the threads to, to lock that bolt in place Now we're going to start making the uh, the little table that is underneath the bottom of the chair. Um, some other pallet would have had just cutting it to the uh, cleaning up the edges. I don't have a planer so I'm using my uh, jig here to straighten off that one edge because the pallet wood wasn't, you know, it's not never straight on the edges. So I just use this to clean up one edge to make it straight as I can. And then I run it through the run it back through the table saw against the fence. Here we're just running through the planer just to clean up the uh, outside edges and save a little bit of sanding and make it thinner as well I wanted this to be thin uh, it's probably like a half inch thin it looked better as the, for a table underneath the uh, chair Cutting all these pieces to length now, and then we'll be ready to uh, start um, putting some biscuits in there to get it assembled. No set dimensions on this either. I think the, the I wanted the, the table to be about 12 inches wide, and then it's as it's uh, about 12 by 20 inches. I think 21 or 20 inches long, just long enough to go in, in from edge to edge on the uh, chair itself. Yeah, there's another something else I don't do a lot of biscuits. So I had this, uh, it's my Harbor Freight planer, and, um, or joiner, and I had the height set wrong on it so the biscuits aren't in the center of the wood, but uh, if it doesn't last I'll just make a new table. Should be alright though with the glue and stuff, I, I, I don't expect it to be uh, too bad. It's underneath the chair as well so it's kind of protected.
So yeah, you can see the uh, they were not centered, but uh, I'll load this up with some glue and glue it together. <clears throat> know if there's a different way I should have done this but the biscuits aren't um, oh, they're just regular biscuits so I'm hoping they hold up with the uh, if, if it gets wet between that joint can't tell how bad it is when it's all put together now let that sit overnight and uh, took it apart good as could be I guess sanded down the uh, edges in the face because it wasn't a you know some pieces were a little higher than others so to try to smooth it out best I could I was thinking about running it through the planer again but I was afraid it might uh, crack the uh, one of the glue joints or something I don't know it wasn't didn't really bother me but it really liked the looks of that wood with the holes in it from the bugs eating it Here we're just uh, going to make a couple handles so when you reach under the chair you can just grab the handle and pull the uh, table out. I only did this on one of the chairs. I, I only put a handle on one of the chairs. Um, after I did it I just kind of didn't like the feel of it when you reach underneath. routing the edges to smooth them off. Alright, now I'm cutting more wood to uh, make the the wood that's going to hold the table underneath the lounge chair. This is just a smaller piece of wood. Uh, you'll see how it's used in a minute. Just cleaning up the edges, getting it all to the size I wanted. And those are all the pieces. It's 
probably overkill for this little table but um I probably could have just had some rails just for it to slide back and forth but this also um, maybe it gives the chair some extra support as well holding the uh, edge sides together better than just the slats So these are just the uh, that's that smaller wood I was talking about. These are just the guides for it to uh, for that allow the table to slide back and forth. And then these pieces uh, <clears throat> hold the table from falling down because this is the, the bottom of the chair. A couple little friends running around there. So at first the <clears throat> table was just going to sit between these two uh, guides and um, <clears throat> after I got it together I didn't like the way the table would just, if you, if you tip the chair over to its side the, the table would just fall out of it so um, I ended up putting like a stop into the uh, table right here to stop it from uh, coming out. So it just keeps it in place so it just slides halfway and stops. And that's it for that. And that was it. Now I'm uh quickly taking this chair totally apart so I can stain everything um, I don't think I put about three coats of bare stain on this I think that chocolate it was called chocolate color the color of it was chocolate stain um, I didn't do any video staining it, but there'll be some pictures at the end of what it looks like. So I uh, hope you liked the video. It's the first one I've talked on telling what I've done, but so it's probably terrible. But hopefully it explained a little bit. And if you stuck around this long, I appreciate it.
did have a video uh, after I stained everything I had a video putting it back together but I didn't think you needed to see that so this was bad enough keeping it under an hour and I just numbered these boards so I remembered where they went after I stained them didn't work as good as I thought because the dark colored stain kinda covered up the pencil marks for the numbers I put on the wood so that was a one challenge ahead trying to get everything back to where it was live and learn So tell me how bad the video was in the comments section. Um, or if it wasn't that bad, just let me know. I appreciate it. just about wraps it up. Following this are going to be some pictures that you can uh, see the finished product. So hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.